Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger is known for her advocating in favor of eugenics as a form of population control. Lauren Ashburn sat down with one expert for a closer look at the link between eugenics and Planned Parenthood. Joining us now is Angela Franks, author of Margaret Sanger's Eugenics Legacy, The Control of Female Fertility. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, I'm glad to be here. Describe eugenics to us. Eugenics is the belief system that a per person's worth is measured by whether or not they're eugenically fit or unfit. And so eugenicists believe that there was a whole group of people whom they labeled the unfit whose value was really less than people whom they thought were genetically superior. So, for example, World War II, when the Nazis used eugenics, they were trying to create a superior race, wiping out thousands of Jews, right? Exactly. So Margaret Sanger then used the eugenics movement to establish Planned Parenthood, which is, I think, what your book is about here. And how did she do that? How did she mold the narrative of eugenics to make it appealing to the entire population? Yeah. So in the 19-teens and 20s and 30s, eugenics was a very popular idea among people who are educated and elite. And so Sanger took this idea that um, there were some people were fit and some people weren't, and she connected it to population control with the slogan, quality, not quantity. And so her idea was that really this was going to save, you know, the human race, that we were going to breed people who are of, of a higher, quote-unquote, quality, um, instead of just having lots of people. So Planned Parenthood uses eugenics in, in what way? It's very clear in the early documents of Planned Parenthood that they were committed to eugenics. Now, after World War II, eugenics really lost a lot of popular support because people saw how murderous it could become. Um, so after World War II, eugenics goes underground, and it really becomes much more closely fused into population control. So I say population control is eugenics with a passport. So I interviewed Archbishop Charles Chaput, and in his new book, he says this about eugenics, the quest through genetics and technology for a new kind of humanity that transcends the jail cell of the purely human brain and flesh is a new research frontier. Why has, has it become so commonplace now? Is it because of the research? Uh, yeah, that's really caused a resurgence of eugenics as the genetic research became more and more um, specialized and more accurate. I mean, really, eugenics in the 1920s was wildly inaccurate. But, but today, we know a lot more about the human genome. And so the idea is now we're going to manipulate it and control it and produce superior people. And very quickly, we just have a few seconds. What is, what is going to happen with the eugenics movement moving forward? Well, I think what's going to happen is that people have to resist it. And that's, uh, you know, the technology is going to be there. All right. Angela Franks, author and director of theology at St. John's Seminary, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.